from John chapter 20. Then Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I'm watching less news these days because it can be kind of depressing, can't it? And, but the other night I broke my rule and I watched a little bit and one of the commentators talked in, about what was going on in the world and he said, we live in an unsettled world, an unsettled world. War, conflict, violence, Gaza, Ukraine. But it's not like we just live in an unsettled world, is it? We live in an unsettled country. Just look at the election coming up. The mistrust. Inflation. Despair. Not only do we live in an unsettled country, but we also, all of us, maybe have some unsettledness in our families. Things that we wish were better, relationships that we wish were better. To be honest with you, with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, even the church finds herself in an unsettled place. And I'd be lying to you if I did not say that I've had unsettled times, even recently, you. And if we were talking about those unsettledness in your life, what would you talk about? Unsettled. It can almost lead you to despair to be cynical at God and cynical at the people around you, cynical at the university, because unsettledness here too. And Thomas knows what it means to be unsettled, doesn't he? The first time Jesus shows up, he's not there, and he makes that bold proclamation that he needs more than the words of his fellow apostles. He needs more than the words of the women. He needs flesh and blood. Fingers in nail holes and hands inside. Until that, I will not believe. Prove yourself, Jesus. If you ever wanted Jesus to prove himself. It's a slippery slope, though. Martin Luther has this interesting quote from a funeral sermon he preached. This is the horrible death when the devil wears a person down. When the devil wears a person down. I don't know about you, but I've been worn down. And Luther is reminding us that that very well can be the devil's work, ultimately being worn down so much that you lose your faith. Despair is the devil's work. In my life, in your life, in the church's life, in the world's life, despair is the devil's work. But Jesus didn't give up on Thomas, did he? He let Thomas stew a little bit, and then Jesus shows up, not scolding him, but loving on him. Peace be with you. Some of the favorite words that the risen Christ speaks to his followers, peace be with you, in all the unsettledness, and all the questions, and all the doubts, and maybe all the mistakes. Peace be with you. It, we shouldn't be so cynical, though, on Thomas, because he wants the real Jesus. And he knew that the real Jesus had scars and wounds. He knew that the real Jesus had been crucified. I need nail holes and wounds. And it is rather comforting, isn't it, that your Jesus and my Jesus has wounds? Because so do you. And so does Thomas. Some of the wounds are physical. 
some of the wounds are emotional and spiritual. And let's be honest, some of the wounds are self-inflicted. But Jesus does not turn his back in this unsettled life of Thomas, nor does he turn his back on you. I don't know what's stirring in your life. I don't know what questions you have. But that same Jesus, that real Jesus, that crucified and risen Jesus, he comes to you. He speaks to you, as he did to Thomas. Stop doubting. Stop worrying. Focus on me. Hear my words. Know your sins are forgiven. Know that I have a divine plan for you. All of us have this big pile of problems, don't we? But even bigger than that pile of problems are the promises that are kept by Jesus and in Jesus. And those promises this morning, they are for you. They are for your ears. They are for your body. They are for your soul. And yes, those promises that Jesus is going to show up were for Thomas as well. Stop doubting and believe. Maybe it's a scold, but could it be an invitation? That Jesus is here for you and me. Oh, he does have some words for Thomas, though. Tom, you believe because you've seen me, and that is a real gift. But there's going to be a whole bunch of people that aren't going to have the gift that you have, at least in this life, in eternity, yes, to see me face to face. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Isn't that why and how you believe? Because you were brought to baptism? Your parents, your grandparents, your teacher, your pastor shared the word of the crucified and risen Christ with you, and people still do. We are heirs of those who are blessed, and we get to bless in unsettled times. I want to end with a story about Karen she was in intensive care. I was her pastor, and she was dying. No children but her husband, uh, David. We were there at the hospital, and we gave... I was there for the Lutheran version of the last rites, okay? They had some very dear friends by the name of Boyd and Charlene, and they were there too, so we all went to the room, and we heard the Word of God. We talked about sin. We talked about our Savior. We talked about the resurrection and the glory that awaits His people. We sang some hymns. We prayed the Lord's Prayer, and we committed her to the care and keeping of her Savior. We stepped out, met in a little room, and Karen went to be with Jesus. But you know what was remarkable? Is that Boyd and Charlene hadn't been to church in years. Next, the next Sunday, I looked out in church, and there were Boyd and Charlene. And they were there every Sunday thereafter. Not only them, but their kids and their grandkids and their greatkids. All of a sudden, they were filling three pews. All because of what happened in a hospital room when the word of Jesus and his death and resurrection was shared with Karen and with them. A little caveat to the story was Boyd had never been baptized and he was, well, he told me he was 78. So he went through some instruction, and we brought him to the baptismal font. We did it in front of 125, 150 people because he was so excited about being baptized, and I wanted to celebrate too, and I said, I just need to tell you all that Boyd is 78 years old, and he's never been baptized. But since he told me he had had a birthday, and his wife Charlene made it very clear in front of everybody, he was not 78. He was 79. And she wanted everybody to know at his baptism that he was 79. I tell you that story so that you know that the message of the risen Christ is for you in chapel. And the message of the crucified and risen Christ works at church. 
And the message of the crucified and risen Christ works in the hospital room, the dorm room, your living room. The message of the crucified and risen Christ works when pastors proclaim it and teachers speak it, and when you, as lay people, share that hopeful message with others. Thomas, you are blessed because you get to see me. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe because somebody shared the message in a variety of places. Please don't discount the opportunities you have to say about Jesus, my Lord and my God, and yours too. Yours too. Even in unsettled times. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We stand for the hymn. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of eternal life. Lord, we live that eternal life now, but only partly until we see that glory of heaven. Lord, in this Easter season, remind us all, especially those who have experienced death recently with their loved ones or families, of that joy of the resurrection and of that peace that comes from knowing our eternal life. Lord, bless us in all the things of our campus, our community, our world this day. Lord, we pray blessings on the many, many activities as we come to the end of the semester for the, the visit day, for the athletic teams, for our music ensembles who are having concerts this weekend. Lord, help many be blessed through those things and that um, students perform well to your glory. Lord, we pray for those who specifically look to you for healing or calling your name. We lift up the mother of Professor Jill Krell, who is undergoing back surgery. This is also the mother of Dr. Roy Peterson, the grandmother of Concordia student McKenna Krell. Gracious Father, grant wisdom and skill to the doctors and the medical team. We pray for a successful surgery, for a quick, a full recovery, and that there would be comfort in your love and in your care in her time of need. Lord, you know many things on our hearts and our minds, whatever they are. We commend to you as the Spirit intercedes for us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We go with God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>